Hey everybody, Chris G, Positively Progressing. I know it's been a while since a long form video. Just wanna say thank you to all the new subscribers and the new followers. Appreciate your support, can't do it without you all. This is a new type of video for me. This is gonna be a long form solo breakdown. I'm gonna break down an entire solo by the one and only Dave Pollock. I'm sure that most of you know Dave is a fantastic educator and in incredible musician. He also has an amazing YouTube channel. This solo you're gonna hear is a masterclass in itself. There's so much to digest. And speaking of courses, Dave actually has a course out right now. It's called Simple Steps to Improvisational Success. It's a really cool course that takes you step-by-step -step on how to create more melodic, organic solos and how to make your solos more interesting. I've looked through the whole entire course. Dave has given me access. Thank you, Dave and it is fantastic. I can't say enough good things about it. If you know Dave's stuff, you know this is gonna be really high quality stuff. So trust me, it's very high quality. There's probably 100 videos in there teaching you different things, and it's, it's a really an amazing resource. So definitely check it out, there's a link below. So the solo I'm breaking down, I did not do the solo transcription. That was done by Alex Dan. Hopefully I said that right. Awesome job, Alex. And another quick heads up, there is some audio funkiness going on at certain parts of the video. I apologize for that, I tried to fix it, but I couldn't, bear with me there. If you guys do like these types of videos, please leave a comment below and possibly a solo that you want me to break down and I'll be happy to do it. Okay, that's enough of me talking. Let's check out the video, let's check out Dave. I'll see you on the other side. All right, let's take a listen to Dave's solo, here we go. <laughs> Boom, right off the bat, love that right there. This is just the third, right, of that E7. So he's kind of playing almost like a walking bass behind that, anticipating and spelling that out and just creating some really nice movement and voice leading. Let's keep going. This embellishment here. There he goes again, Tweeda, right? So we got the five here, and then he's going to the flat nine. Nice. Now we'll listen how he changes up the melody on the B section. So the those first eight bars are are pretty much the same, and then what he's going to do is he's he's just changing up it rhythmically and creating a different melody than in the A section. <laughs> Still going with that really nice walking bass, kind of adding more movement in here. Like listen to this section again. Let's let's play it again. Boom. Woo! You check that out right there. Bebop baby. A la Stit or whoever you want to think of, but that is great. That that language right there, that C7 language, definitely take a listen to that. And then look at this nice big leap he does to kind of just express the melody a little differently. So unique, so so Dave. So he's kind of putting his own nice touches on it. Let's move Dave up a little bit. Let's check the rest of this out. So we have that ba ba beta, right? So really, really nice. Now that's like the and of four right there. Check out now as he goes through this first part of the solo, listen to the rhythmic similarities and the and the melodic similarities. Like he's gonna be repeating the same idea and then he creates a new phrase from that same idea. Moving Dave back down, so we had that boom ba beta, and now he's right at the top. Boom. Right. So listen, he did that change up, you know, ba ba beta, ba ba beta, and then he does this here, right? Makes it more scalar, but he still ends with same quarter note on three. And then the four and, right? 
let's take another listen to whole, that whole thing. It's such a beautiful sequence and so simple, right? It's it, when you break it down like this, it's it's so simple when you look at it. There we are. So right there does the same thing like this is this bar and this bar is pretty much the same thing, right? He's kind of instead of playing an eighth note here, he's got this eighth rest and then he's playing this 16th with a with an enclosure, right? And doing the same thing here. But instead of that eighth rest, he's got the actual eighth note, same rhythm with an enclosure. So so really so listen, that's that's that melodic linking going on. He's and rhythmic linking. So he's got this this melody, this idea going on, and then he's repeating it. So it's it's getting familiar with the listener's ear, which makes it way more interesting. Now check out what he does here. I'm I'm going to write on this before he does it, but this is like an A flat minor, right? Triad. And the great thing about A flat playing like a half step above a dominant chord as a minor chord, it gives you the flat 9 right and it also gives you sharp 5 in this case or the flat 13 so that's a little trick i think i've done a video on this before in the past but a really nice thing that you can do to just express a simple idea using a triad play a half step above whatever chord it is in this case it's g7 so we play a half step above and we make it a minor triad and you get these beautiful colors so here he goes <laughs> So that whole sequence, right? So he's starting with some sixths here. So that's a sixth. That's a sixth, right? Jumps up to a seventh there. But then he keeps that same idea going, those larger intervals. You got another big jump here, which is another sixth. Then he does another, that's a seventh. So similar idea, right? And then similar rhythm. Boom, ba ba do ba ba do da da ba do da ba do da ba do we are right i'm not a singer <laughs> so but let's listen to that again that's it's worth another listen it's beautiful <laughs> mm. Ooh, that right there that whole section just bluesy right bluesy af man and then check this out this is this is great this this line is great here we go. Ooh. So this is great. I mean, he's using pretty much, I mean, it sounds like a tritone sub to me. I haven't talked to Dave about this, but I mean, essentially that's that's what I'm hearing. Um, but, but you can see the idea here, that same idea that's just above, just right there. Half step above the dominant chord, you're getting beautiful colors, but he's got all these other things going on, which to me spells out an F sharp seven. Right, and let's keep going. All right, check out the check out the range Dave uses. Let's move him up. Check out the range Dave uses here. Check out right, all the way up. Ooh. Look at that. I mean, look at the rhythmic variety he's using, right? So much diverse rhythm. So he's he's got some 16th notes right there. Then he's got this whole triplet section, right? Two bars of eighth note triplets, basically. You can see some enclosure ideas right there. There's an enclosure. There's another enclosure. There's another one, right? Man, um, there's another one. Right, so just just really, really great stuff i mean this is a great solo to study and learn definitely try to learn it by ear but if you want to break it down and kind of do this type of thing this is great for that so let's see what let's keep going more oh nice all right so that's that's a really great little so he starts that sequence like right here 
and he kind of follows it up there. And what I think he's doing here, and I'll, maybe I'll ask Dave this, but I think what he's doing is he's kind of doing a half step two five above. So maybe he's doing that, like G sharp to C sharp seven. And then he's making the, the two five G minor to C seven here. Let's listen to that again. Right, here we go. Yeah, that totally sounds like he's just basically playing the same idea just a half step away. And that maybe that's what he's he's thinking there. Obviously, he's probably not thinking while he's soloing this, but that's probably what he's hearing and what he's probably practiced and, you know, has figured out in the practice room over the years. Here we go. Ooh, I love that. Oh. Right, so that's like Lydian to me. Or like almost, it's just like whole tone, um, which you can use that that whole tone scale over that over the dominant. Which she's got two bars to kind of stretch out, plays like just quarter notes. Like how cool is that? Like he's just playing quarter notes, and it sounds awesome, right? And then he goes into this whole thing here. Wait till you hear this. This is chordal, in my opinion, not chordal, like not C H. It's uh, you know, chordal. Like I think that's the right way to like fourths basically right there there's fourths but check this out this idea is is rad and it's kind of like f basically that lines fourths here we go <laughs> not moving up sorry about that <laughs> got too caught up in his playing so same idea there look like it's kind of like a half step right playing some half step lines then playing some really classic bebop phrasing let's listen to that one again yeah i love that so it's it's he's still doing that that half step uh same thing he did up up there but basically thinking of this as the g sharp to c sharp and then bringing it back in right because this is kind of out in a way and then he's bringing it back in there into that classic bebop and then he's going straight back into the melody bringing it back to the melody back to the melody baby <laughs> Tag. Mm. Nice. Man, beautiful playing. Absolutely beautiful. All right, see you on camera. So that's the solo. Incredible, right? I mean, he's an amazing player. He's an amazing dude. Um, I can't say enough great things. I probably didn't even hit half of the stuff I should have hit in that solo, but as you can see, this is a pretty long video. If you've made it this far, man, thank you so much for making it this far. <laughs> I'll leave you with that. Just remember, always positive, always progressing. I'll see you next time. Later. <laughs>